Hi, welcome to another episode. This time we're going to take a look at a heavy game. Uh, and I don't mean heavy as in uh, complexity to play the game. I mean heavy, like the box weighs a ton. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Caverna. Okay, I've done that joke before, but I'm kind of not really joking. It's very heavy. It's a big box, as you can see. That is a big, big box, which is full of stuff. Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look at a close-up, see what's inside the box and why it's so heavy. Inside my box uh, of Caverna, I've got these uh, um, laminated sheets, which are double-sided. These don't come with the game. These are made by putting the towels on, on a scanner, scanning them and then laminating them. There's two here, so it makes, makes it easier. Uh, and I'll get to why I made those in a bit. So we've got player boards, uh, sorry, main boards. Player board, player board, main board, main board, an appendix, rules, bits, more bits. Again, doesn't come with these uh, plastic boxes, they're an addition. It comes with bags, so the extra bits bagged up, extra player pieces bagged up, more cabins bagged up, some extra bits that I've added, uh, more cows bagged up, more bits, additional boards, building boards, Building boards, building boards, building boards, cards and harvest markers, score sheet, player board, player board, player board, player board, player board, very deep, very empty box. Firstly, Caverna takes up a lot of table space. Here we have a table set up for two players. And this isn't exactly a small table, it can seat eight. Anyway, um, additional players would just each need one of these player boards and the layout of the main board may well change. Here we can see it's one to three. Uh, the main board there is one to seven. And what you do is the additional boards that you've seen when I was showing you the contents will have a number. So this one you'd add in a five player. The opposite side is six to seven. And there's one to three and so on and so forth. In fact, this one here will flip over. Uh, most of them are double sided. Uh, on the left we have the buildings. So you have dwellings uh, and rooms and caves and chambers and so on and so forth. Each one of these boards has another side which reduces the number of buildings you'd get. That is a full complex setup. You can simplify it. On each person's player board, they get two dwarfs to start with, uh, marked here. And these dwarfs live in this room, which has got a room for two dwarfs. They have three more, along with three stables. 
random green one there. Um, so these can't be used at the start there when you have children. So you put the stables on top to remind you not to use them. Okay. And the blue player has the same. And the second player starts with two food, whereas player one, marked by the start player, only has one food. And the game will last over 11 or 12 rounds, depending. So we have round one, two, three, four, and so on. In a two-player game, round nine is skipped, uh, also skipped in the, the solo game. Um, here's a difference from, from Agricola for those people who have played Agricola. There's no harvest for the first two turns. Then wherever you see a leaf symbol, there is a full harvest. After round four, when the wish for children comes out, there is a pay one food per dwarf, and full harvest, and then you get these counters here. And these counters are randomly seeded, and you'll flip them over, and if it has a question mark, then you'll put the question mark on this and there'll be no harvest then there'll be pay one food per dwarf instead of harvesting and finally you'll choose whether the field phase so if three question marks come out they'll all fill uh, and then at the end there is the scoring round and as each round starts you'll take a card from the pile just like agricola uh, and you'll uh, put it on the, on the board, and that will be then become a work placement spot. So all of these uh, spots here, the ones that are printed on, and the cards are work placement spots, and you will take one of your dwarfs in turn order, place it out, and do what it says. So in this one, you take any stone that accumulates, and there's a little marker that tells you at the start of each turn, add one stone. Uh, sometimes it's add three, and the bracket says one, so if there's three there, you'll add the one stone. And then it lets you put a cave and a cavern down. If you do excavation, you get the choice. Starting player gives you the starting player marker, two ore and whatever food's built up. Ruby mining lets you put a ruby down. Logging gives you wood, supplies gives you a mixture. Ore mining gives you ore. Um, housework lets you furnish a cavern. Uh, and the bottom ones here are clearing, sustenance and slash and burn. And they deal uh, respectively the ones at the top there. They deal with the inner area here, so you're trying to do your cave, and the other ones deal with the out. And when you get one, you will take from the uh, supply here, you will take a cave uh, of your choice, or depending what the workspace from the spot, and it will go down on the board like so. And if you cover one of the spots up, for example this, or that or here you will get the resource so you can get wild ball uh, from the outside uh, by well not covering up with a cave but if you took one of these you would then get the spot that's covered up and you can also build ruby mines they have to go on top of the mines uh, shafts and ore mines. So if you had two tunnels together, for example there, uh, you went to the spot that you build an ore mine, you could put the ore mine down at the end of the game, uh, sorry, when you do the action on those two tunnels that turns it into an ore mine and you get three points at the end of the game or if you did the ruby mining slot 
that would go on one and it would get you four. Or, cleverly, if you put the ruby mine on top of a deep tunnel, the black one, you would get a ruby. So that's how those work. And these also have double fields on the back of them. So you don't get the little uh, wooden fences like you would in Agricola. That's where four points and can hold four animals. Uh, you use that instead. Um, animals have to be kept in fence pastures unless they're sheep. Sheep get to be looked after on a field by a dog. So if you had a sheep and a little doggy doggy, huh? and that sheep, that dog can look after one more sheep. So one dog can look after one sheep. Two dogs could look after two. The uh, mines, donkeys can go in mines so they don't need to be fenced in. They can also be fenced in, but if you put them in a mine, they'll happily look after themselves. Right, one of the major differences between this and Agricola is the blacksmithing, uh, uh, it's turning ore into weapons. So the ore, which you have here, can be used at blacksmithing to make a weapon and your dwarf will get a token with the appropriate weapon level number on it. And that lets them go on quests. Any spot that has a number like so, will let them go. So let go of that many number of quests. So the three here, you could choose three rewards up to the level of your dwarf from this sheet. So you've, you could have a wood, or a dog, or it's just one, one from each level, but either of so you could have wood and uh, dog. If you're level two, you could drop down, for example. So you don't have to pick the exact level, but that just tells you how high up you can go. And adventuring, for example, is the only way you can get a cow outside of buying one with rubies. So adventuring is a, a critical part of the game because typical adventure, a uh, typical worker placement style. Whoever goes here blocks it for anybody else. And it gets more complicated because the higher the number is on the weapon value, the later the dwarf gets out of bed. So you can't put the 14 guy out before the five guy, and you can't put either on them out before you put one that's got no weapon. And this is where rubies come into play. So these are the little rubies here. And what they'll do for you is they will let you do many things as well as being worth one point at the end of the game. You can turn one ruby into the, any of the items listed or one ruby and one food into a cow or two rubies lets you put a, a cavern down. But you'll notice it says that play one dwarf out of order. So you could use a ruby to send your big weapon guy out first, thus bagging the decent expedition play, place. However, it loses you a point because scoring in this game is, is simplified from, the, from Agricola. So if we look at this one, for example, you will score each farm element dog, you'll score minus two for missing types. You'll get points per grain rounded up, vegetable, point per ruby. Uh, a lot less points for family members. Each one of these spaces on the board that you don't use will lost, cost you a point. And then you score for the individual um, chambers. So these will all have different sort of things. So uh, if we look at the state parlor here, you'll get four points on that when scoring. But some of them will say um, you'll get extra points.
points depending and I'm trying to find one as an example and here we go so this one at the end of the game gets you one point per stone that you have left uh, and then whoever scores the highest is the winner and the losers get to pack all this lot away yes the losers are surely punished by having to put all this away so that's a kind of overview of Caverna. If you've played Agricola, you'll pick this game up easily. If you've played any, any work placement game, uh, even a fairly simple one, sort of Stone Age, Lords of Waterdeep, you can pick this game up fairly easy. It's, I think, it's the third work placement game uh, I played with a wife. And the buildings flip them over there's like well 20 or 30, uh, 20 buildings i think to choose on rather than all, all the buildings so that simplifies it slightly um it plays up to seven and i don't ever want to play this game with seven people i've played it with five it's long and you're waiting quite some time uh, till it gets to your turn and this is a euro, uh, so player interaction is basically limited to stealing spots other people wanted. So if you go before them by manipulating the first player token, uh, then you steal the spots, that's the interaction. With seven, I'd probably fall asleep before the game got round to me. I'm not saying it's a bad game. One, I'm sorry, I'm not playing solo, but two to four, this game shines. It was... For a while, my only 10 on Board Game Geek. It's now 9.5. I've knocked it down. Uh, the reason for that is setup. It's a nightmare. I, I mean, just putting this out, putting all those buildings, finding them, putting them down, getting the player pieces out, putting the cards down, shuffling the, um, the harvest markers. If it wasn't for these which in the UK are from Home Bargains at about a couple of pounds each, the game would be even worse. I would dread to think what you'd do setting this up if you took it out of bags. I'd probably rage quit before I started playing the game. Maybe I've got a patience problem. However, that's by the by. These things are a godsend, especially for the bits that you're going to be getting out, because each round you're going to have to get wood uh, and donkeys and sheep and put them out on the areas of the board there. Secondly, as I've shown at the start, is the, these sheets, because if I'm over here and the buildings are all the way over there at the other end of this table, I'm going to have to get up, walk over there uh, and look to see which one I want to build or in the next round. This sheet, which is just a photocopy of the actual tiles, laminated, means I can just go, oh yes, I want to build the cuddle room this round because I've got the raw resources and maybe the breakfast room, for example, in a few rounds. Let's you plan ahead without getting up, annoying all the other players and walking over there. Uh, now, like Agricola, this has harvests and, and the harvests are reasonably punishing it's not agricola but it isn't as some people like to say oh it's just that easy yes it isn't agricola but you get harvest 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 if those tokens don't give you a breather uh, and you can be struggling for for food and you don't want to get a a sort of bonus a one of these a begging marker you don't uh, so yeah, so also even if you if you do pull a question mark, the first one's no harvest, great. But after that, you're paying food and you're not getting to harvest um, your vegetables from the field. Um, and the last one, you have to choose. So there's some punishment there, uh, and that's good. It keeps the game tense. Uh, so aside from setup uh, and tear down being a criticism. Um, the weight of the box is, is ridiculous. Um, maybe one to five players would have made it a bit lighter. I don't know, and 
I don't think we'll ever know. I can get everything including these plastic boxes back in the box, so uh, at least it's all in the box. I just can't really carry it anywhere if I'm going to use my uh, push bike because that's not going in my rucksack and making things comfortable. So wait, set up and tear down uh, uh, is is my only only real criticism. Some people online uh, have said that the buildings is predictable, unlike Agricola, uh, you get the cards, so you know you're drafted, you never know. Possibly, but I've, pl I've played this plenty of times and it's, it's not causing an issue yet. I, I fully expect as well that like Agricola, all creatures big and small, which uses the building tiles as well, that there'll be expansions for this. Uh, so yeah, uh, to summarize, if you in any way like worker placement games, if you enjoy a mid-weight classic Euro romp, if you enjoy UA Rosenberg's games, uh, get this. It's pricey, but get it. Um, that's my advice, and I hope you enjoyed listening to me uh, ramble on again. Um, and stay tuned for more videos soon. I'm actually going to play this game later, so thankfully I don't have to just put it all away because that would be self-destroying. <laughs> Bye for now.